Thank you, Jody. Gentlemen, I must tell you, it's always difficult to get up and speak after you have such a grand act like that, um, such a gift of spirit. Thank you. Bless you. Thank you so much. Oh, so will you join me in prayer? Heavenly Father, I thank you for your presence here with me and with our congregation right here, right now. I ask that your words and your actions and your thoughts flow through me and that the meditations of my heart are acceptable. In your eyes, I give thanks and praise for your guidance. Amen. So last week, we um, took a little journey on the beginning of how to dream. And one of the most wonderful things happened. Someone forgot to press the button to record the talk. Now, why is that wonderful? Well, because there were a lot of things that happened during that talk that were kind of humorous, but also gives me a chance to review just a little bit of what we talked about. And we all have this idea of what dreams are on our heart and how they should come forward, but we have to prepare for that. And one of the examples I use was Jesus' time in the wilderness that after his baptism and he received the Holy Spirit, that he went into the wilderness and he was tempted by the devil. And I talked about how we must go through our time of wilderness, our time of temptations, our time, uh, our dark nights of the soul. And however that manifests in our lives, whatever challenges that arise, we have to go through it. And each one of us has or maybe are currently, whether it's through disease, um, whether it's an economic challenge, a lifestyle challenge, one day you're employed, the next day you're retired. All kinds of challenges that come our way, and they're so important to go through. And it was important for Jesus to go through this too, because before he could go into his dream of ministry, he needed to go through that letting go of being human, of letting all the human uh, temptations come forward. And just like us, we have to let go of our humanness sometimes so the dream can come forward. Now, daring to dream is really apt for Independence Day. And um, we're going on year number 242 as a nation. and. It hasn't been an easy task these 242 years. We had this glorious vision that was presented 242 years ago, and we're still working it out. And um, sometimes, for some of us, it's been, wow, this is so wonderful. Everything's going in our favor, idealistically or <laughs> ideological. And for some of us, we're like, oh my gosh, when's this going to be over? It's got to change. Now, what's interesting to me about when this country started was not everyone was on board for a new nation. And it's reported that John Adams, who was our second president, identified that 33%, so a third of the nation, was for independence. Another third of the nation was supporting the British and another third of, the, third of the nation didn't take a stance one way or the other. Doesn't that sound familiar? <laughs> Some things just hasn't, haven't changed. And the reason why we went towards independence, the reason why our founding fathers went for it, was that they were being taxed. The colonies were being taxed, but not represented. And not only that, there wasn't an equal taxation going on. One colony would have one tax, another colony would have another tax. So you have all these colonies all grouped together, and yet they weren't all fairly being taxed at the, in the same way. And this really angered the people from Massachusetts. And I know there are people here from Massachusetts, and they're easy to angry. Anger. <laughs> they want it fair for everyone. Now, we didn't invent democracy. 
The Greeks had it long before us, but we took this grand experiment to a place that no one had taken it before, and we're still working it out. And it's really kind of wonderful, no matter where you're at in life, to be a part of the nation, the country, that is a, is a standard bearer in so many ways. So many people want to come and live here for a variety of reasons. We take sometimes for granted the freedoms that we have. And one of those freedoms that we have is that freedom to dream. Dreams don't always unfold in the exact manner or way that we expect them to. But they're usually always unfolding according to divine order. And our dreams, well, they come from invisible sources. They're parts of our imaginations and desires. Our mind propels an idea and we act to create an expression. In unity, we have, you know, in Christianity, we have the Trinity, God the Father, the Son, which is Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. In unity, we have the metaphysical uh, Trinity, which is mind, divine mind. And then the idea is like the Christ. The idea came from the mind, and the expression is like the Spirit. It's the manifestation of what mind and idea are coming together. And it's a very important piece as we approach dreams to think of our dreams in this way. Many times we think our dreams are just our dreams. They belong to me. I certainly felt that way for many years, that uh, Robert as an entity, Robert's dreams were Robert's dreams. They belonged to no one else. But as I age and as I mature, I realize that while that is true, the dreams are shared by many. And in some ways, they're shared by all. We use our power of imagination to allow God's glory to come forward, to allow the things that the things that are not present to be present. And in order for something to be present that's not present, it has to start with a thought. It just doesn't come out of the air. And the thought is coming from divine mind. And then we get to turn that into an expression. Now, that's really good when we're doing things that are positive things that are really uh, making this world a happier, better place. But a lot of times, our minds, because of how they are, because of how human nature is, it's so easy to go to the not so positive, or I will actually use the word negative. How often does our minds generate thoughts that are limiting, that keep us right here, not expansive, but right here. In fact, they go more and more smaller, smaller, smaller. Whereas God's potential is this and beyond. Infinity and beyond. I, I've had a lot of dreams in my life, and I have to say that um, as I've aged and matured, They've changed forms, probably just like you. When I was a child, I dreamt of being a minister, and it was a big dream, and I knew it would take a lot of work and study. And as I have shared with you before, as someone who excelled at underachieving, that really wasn't on my list of criteria to do, was a lot of study and a lot of work. I had dreams of great travels around the world and throughout the universe. I had dreams of meeting and befriending important people. 
I've got to share a story with you, and this is a little bit unrelated, but it is. So I always had this dream that I was going to meet Alice Walker, the, the author. I love Alice Walker. She's one of my favorite authors. She wrote The Color Purple. And my dream was that I was going to meet Alice Walker, and we would be like soulmates instantly. She would see in my eye that spark of divinity, and I already knew her spark of divinity because she was such an exceptional author. And I just knew that we were going to bond and be friends forever. And then I got to go see Alice Walker and, um, as she gave a, uh, a presentation. And I was the first in line with my book to get signed. And Alice said, and I went, Alice, it's your beloved. It's Robert. Don't you get it? Of course, I didn't say that, but I was thinking that. I was thinking that. In Matthew 6, 19, it says, Do not store up yourself treasures on earth where moths and rust consume and where the thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. And this is... This is the best part. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And that is the root of our dreams. Where our treasure is, there our heart will be also. And it really isn't in the things necessarily that we do or that we obtain or gain in life. It really is more about the experience of being whole, of having loving, nurturing relationships, of accepting and knowing that we live in an abundant world and it is doing everything to give us that abundance, to allow us to bask in our abundance, whatever that looks like. It isn't about our humanness. The dreams, the treasure that we have is about our spirit. It is about what we can't experience through spirit in our lives. It's about what we adore. And my heart adores those relationships and it adores beauty and discovery and creativity and joy and kindness. This is my treasure. This is my realized dream. And I think for many of us, this is so. But wait, that's not all. This is really sort of the important piece of it. We have to believe that we deserve it. Throughout our lives, we've been told in so many ways that we are not worthy, that we don't deserve it, or we only deserve it if we do X, Y, and Z. Our consciousness must come to that place, that place in the road where it says, I am worthy. God our Father, the Creator, that is all love, all knowledge, everywhere present. And I, as an expression of that, am worthy of my dream to come forward. This, to me, is the real American dream. It's not the attainment of what's on the outside. It's knowing that I deserve to be treated respectfully, lovingly, and that I surround myself with people who do so. It is knowing that I am worthy of all the abundance in the world, that it's mine because it was created to be mine. I know that I am worthy of appreciating beauty and that beauty is everywhere. And if it's not beautiful, 
I know it is my challenge then to make it so, to see it differently. For where your treasure is, your heart will be, will be also. Now we are embarking next week on Keys to the Kingdom, and I've done a lot of promo, so to speak, beforehand, explaining that to you. But to me, Keys to the Kingdom in any um, program, oh, thank you. <laughs> I forgot I had slides. <laughs> Keys to the Kingdom in any prosperity program is about reminding us of how worthy we are, how worthy we are to have and live in utter prosperity, to have good health, to heal from disease, to have our needs being taken care of, to imagine life much greater than we have ever lived it. It's the opportunity to practice and excess divine mind, generate ideas, and manifest through expression. It's seven weeks, Tuesday nights from 6 to 8, July 10th to July 21st. I'm encouraging this as, uh, for individuals and as a group. It's a, it can and will be an exciting time for this church. We are blessed to live in a nation that many seek to live in. We live in the midst of an abundant, prosperous universe. We are worthy to live out the glorious treasures of our hearts. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Will you join me as I close in prayer? Thank you, loving God. Thank you for the world we live in and all that you have given us. We thank you for opening our minds and hearts to seeing it fully and to experiencing it fully, to expressing it fully, that we live in a way that we grow and heal and love and enjoy and celebrate more and greater. We thank you, dear God, for all that has been given to us. And we claim this in the name and the nature of the living Christ. Amen.